This is Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah, and welcome to another AI tutorial with the Unity and C Sharp. In previous episodes, we saw how to create a vicious chasing enemy, as well as a more intelligent opponent that shoots at the player character and retreats if necessary. Today, we will make from scratch a classic NPC behavior that can be used in 2D or 3D games and in many different genres. I'm talking about patrol. As you can see, we have this red square that is randomly moving around the scene and then stopping for a few seconds at a certain location. This is what we will make today. We'll start off by making a patrol script that has the enemy navigate between fixed move spots and finish off by making a few modifications to our script so our NPC can move at any location in the scene. So as usual, I have an almost empty Unity scene with this red square sprite I quickly created in Photoshop. Let's bring it to life. To do so, I'll create a new c -sharp script, call it Patrol, drag and drop it on my red square and open it up to begin programming. As usual, I'll start by making a public float variable called speed that will be used to tweak how fast we want our character to move around the scene. I'll then make a public array of type transform called move spots. We will be placing in this array all the positions our red square can potentially move to. Lastly, I'll make a private int variable called random spot and as the name implies, we will use this to pick a random position from our move spots array. With that done, I'll set my random spot variable equal to a random number in the start function. Doing so is really easy. Just type random.range after the equal sign and inside the parentheses state what values our int variable can vary between. I'll put in zero because arrays start at zero and move spots dot length. Basically our int variable can be equal to a number between 0 and the number of elements in our array. Now in the update function, I'll get my character moving to that random location. To do so, I'll use like in the previous videos of the series, vector2.movetowards. In the parentheses, I'll state where I want to move from, so simply my current transform.position and where I want to move to. I want to move to a random position in our array, so I'll put as index random spot. And I'll finish up by stating at what speed I want my character to move around, multiplied with time dot delta time. So to recap, in our start function, we are setting our int variable equal to a random number that we then use to get our red square moving to a random location. If all this is a little hard to understand, I definitely recommend you check out the quick but very informative video on arrays me and my brother Liam made together a few months ago, as well as the chasing enemy AI tutorial. Okay, now that we have our enemy moving to a random spot, let's create an if statement checking if it's reached that spot, and if it has, make it wait a few seconds before moving to another random location. Now what we could simply do here is check if our current position is equal to the random spot's position. But this isn't very reliable, because even a tiny difference in the position's coordinates can have the statements return false. Instead, let's type in vector2.distance and check the distance between our red square and its destination. If the distance separating the two is, say, smaller than 0.2f, then we'll consider the character has reached his goal and the if statement will return true. Now we want a red square to wait a little before moving to another position. Let's make two float variables, one private called wait time and another public called start wait time. In the start function, we will set wait time equal to start wait time, and under my if statement, I'll make another if statement and this time check if the wait time variable is less or equal to zero. 
basically checking if it's time for the character to get moving again to a new random position. If it isn't, we will slowly decrease the wait time by typing in wait time minus equals time dot delta time. So if wait time is equal to say 3, then the red square will stand idle for 3 seconds. We will now copy and paste the random number generation line of code and paste it in here. So basically getting our character to move to a new location because the position we wish to move to is a position of a different index in our move spot array. Lastly, I'll set wait time equal to the value of our start wait time variable. That is the reason we created these two variables in the first place, so we don't have to hard code any values. In Unity, I'll set speed to something like 10, and then create a bunch of empty game objects called move spots that will act as the positions our red square can move to. A nice Unity tool that we can use is giving our empty game objects an icon. I'll choose a red diamond and increase slightly the gizmo's size. Now we have a clear view of our different positions. Once you've finished creating and placing your positions, we will drag and drop them in our array. Another famous quick tip is locking the inspector. This way we can grab all our move spots and drag and drop them in our array quickly and easily. Pressing play, you will see that everything works perfectly. Awesome! As I promised, we will now give our red square the possibility of moving everywhere in the scene. Of course, your game may not want or need this sort of patrol freedom. If that is the case, just use the current script. But for those interested, let's go back inside of our scripting editor and firstly, change our transform array into a regular transform variable called move spot and also get rid of the random spot variable. I will now remove everything that's got to do with that random spot value as well as replace the array syntax with that of a basic transform variable. Before writing the magic line of code that will get all of this working, let's create four float variables. One called min x, another max x, min y and max y. These variables will hold the min and max x and y coordinates our red square can patrol to. So in Unity, I'll check the maximum x value I want my square to move to. In my case, I would like it to move no further than the edge of the screen, which happens to be an x value of 34. On the other side, it's minus 34. And for y, it's 18 and minus 18. So once all those values are typed in the inspector, I will now set my move spot variable equal to a new vector2 that has random coordinates. So for the x value, I want random coordinates between min x and max x, and for y, min y and max y. I'll copy this line of code and paste it under the wait time if statement. So once the red square has waited a little, he moves to a completely new position. Before hitting play, choose one of the empty game objects we created earlier and delete the others. Then drag and drop this remaining one inside the move spot empty slot. Testing this in Unity, you will see that our character moves about the scene in an unpredictable manner. Perfect. And with that, I'll wrap up the video. As usual, thanks so much for watching. I hope all was clear and that you will be able to implement this into whatever creation you are currently working on. Don't forget to be awesome and hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you have any questions or problems, of course, leave a comment. And with that, I'll see you very soon. Cheers.